everyone welcome back to my channel if you are a returning subscriber you already know thank you for always coming back to watch my video i truly appreciate you if you are new here welcome my name is amara shinzekwe and i'm a nigerian currently living and working in Kaunas, lithuania please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also go through my other videos you'll find it a thing or two that would interest you anyway guys uh today hmm, Today, I'm going to be talking about a few things that they don't tell you when you want to move abroad or things that, should I say things that I wish I knew because these things are not really talked about, about moving abroad. Everybody feels like moving abroad is so bougie and so fancy and so adventurous and it's nice and the experience is nice. And they don't tell you about the downsides of moving abroad or what you're likely going to experience when you move abroad. So yeah, we are going to be spilling all the tea. Make sure you watch this before you move abroad. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the loneliness. Interestingly or fortunately, these things are now talked about more than they were before. Before, people don't talk about the loneliness because when you want to talk about it, people make you seem like you're ungrateful or something or you're just, you know, you're just whining. But see, the loneliness that you feel when you move abroad is not a joke. Like it's actually not a joke, especially if you move to a country where you do not know anybody. When I was moving to Lithuania, I, well, I mean, it was even luckily for me, I moved with friends because there are a couple of us who moved together. But I'm just trying to imagine what it would feel like if I moved alone because even without moving alone, guys, it was hard. It was really hard and then sometimes I'll wake up and I'll miss my friends so much and I'll start to cry. I miss my family. In fact, I, I, I started a podcast. I have a podcast and... The first episode I made for my podcast was just this day where I was feeling really down and missing my friends and I just started to record it. I'll put a link to that particular podcast in the in the description box but like it's not funny, it's not cool at all because you're just there normally when you can just randomly like meet up people, you know, meet up your friends for drinks So just the fact that you know that you can even meet up your friends if you want to and it, it makes all the difference because even when I was in Nigeria, I didn't... I wasn't living with my family, but the fact that I know that they were just, you know, one flight away or one bus away just made things easier. But now they are so far away and it's almost like you can feel the distance. Like you can literally feel it in your soul. <laughs> it's so bad. And a lot of times you can't even talk about what you're feeling with your family because you don't want to seem ungrateful and you don't want to seem like a nag or someone who whines a lot. So you have to deal with it yourself. And because you're dealing with it yourself, you just feel worse than you feel. One thing that I felt would have helped me when I moved was, you know, if you're like a collective of um, people who, a collective of other Nigerians or a collective of Nigerian women that I knew, you know, who lived abroad, who had experienced what I was experiencing and could help me. But I didn't get that and I decided to start it because I felt like I could help people, you know, not experience what I had to experience myself. So yeah, this is just like a... A plug a plug of the collective that i started so i started a collective in, of nigerian women in diaspora and if you want to join or if you want to be a part of us you can just you know reach out to me send me a message anywhere here or even in the comment section and then i will send you the link to the group so now the next thing i'm going to talk about which is related to this first point is the fact that you know nobody tells you how difficult nobody tells you how difficult it is to make friends <laughs> It's so difficult to make friends because even generally as an adult in your home country, yeah, it's hard to make friends. <laughs> I feel like one of the hardest things to do in your adult life is making friends because everybody is going through life. Everybody is struggling. Everybody is trying to, you know, to make something out of their lives. It almost feels like nobody, nobody has time or nobody is interested in making friends. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> It's so hard. So yeah, nobody tells you how difficult it is to make friends because in your home country, you know people who know people and then a friend will probably invite you somewhere and then you meet a friend of a friend and that way. So there are always like people who connect you to other people, which is how most of us make friends, you know, a friend of a friend becomes our friend. But yeah, where you are alone, you're like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just go out for drinks and hope that I would see somebody who will talk to me or see somebody who I'll approach? You know, these are questions you ask yourself and people say, oh yeah, go out, put yourself out there. Uh, how? <laughs> how so that's the thing how do you push yourself out there 
especially if you're not in school i mean i didn't I, I didn't go to school i feel like it would be easier if you're in school because there you have people that you have things in common with and you can easily you know bond with these people but when you're working i'm not saying that my colleagues are not friendly or my colleagues i cannot consider my colleagues friends but it's a little bit not the same thing <laughs> if i can say so yeah your colleagues can be your friends but in most cases they most likely end up being just your colleagues and then you just need to know people and meet people outside your workplace that you can connect with and fam it's so hard thank god for social media that way i i feel like right now the best thing to do is just you know put yourself out there on social media there's this bumble app that is for making friends you can sign up there i, I was <laughs> my bumble experience hasn't been great but i know people who have had great experiences and made friends on bumble there's also twitter there's also youtube interestingly youtube is actually a nice way to make friends so what you can do again there are not a lot of actually i don't know any other african youtuber in lithuania but if you're in places where there are more african youtubers or there are more youtubers from your country you can connect with them on youtube there's one way to do it that's one way to connect so yeah when when you realize how difficult it is to make friends you realize that you know you have no choice than to find unconventional methods of making friends which one of it is social media twitter instagram youtube facebook just find people in your area of people that you have things in common with and start this friendship business <laughs> because definitely generally life becomes easier when you have friends it's hard it's hard i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie so you have to you know you have to be conscious or be willing to put yourself out there more yeah i just used that line <laughs> Yeah, but like you have to be willing to put yourself out there more if you are living abroad to be able to make friends more than you would in your home country. That's just the sad truth. Another thing that I'm going to talk about <laughs> is the money part of it. People do not tell you the financial aspect of moving abroad. Now, <laughs> even if you're going to be moving abroad to end more or if you're going to be moving abroad with support from family, I feel like financial planning is more important when you are not living in your home country. You know, in your home country, you can rough it up because, you know, somehow, somehow, you know, people can come through for you. You can stay with a friend. You can, you know, go home to eat free food and all of that free stuff that you can get when you're in your home country. You don't get that in another country. So, like, you are all by yourself. You are all by yourself. You have to take care of your financial needs yourself. So yeah, financial planning is very, very, very important. Like I can't even overemphasize how financial, how important financial planning is because things are new to you. Things are different to you. You, you may not, you may not know how to save costs or cut costs. You may not know how to, um, how to get things at a bargain. A lot of things will be strange to you because it's not a country you are used to. So because of that, you may not, you know, find the other ways that locals could save money. So you're like left to, you know, how well you can do by yourself. So it's very important that you plan, you plan your rent because you're not going to call up somebody and say, oh, help me complete or take a loan because it's even harder. I mean, speaking as a Nigerian now, sending money from Nigeria, getting money from Nigeria to spend here is difficult. And I don't even try to think about it. I don't even try to, you know, worry my head about it because there's also the exchange rate. So when you think about all these things, you know that, you know, you have just the money you make to survive. And then you also realize that it would be it would be harder for you to get loans in another country if you eventually need it. So all these things will just make you realize that, huh, fam, you can't joke with financial planning as a foreigner in a different country. Just know that. Another thing that you have to understand is that you see that it's more difficult to you know have multiple sources of income in a country that you just moved to. Uh, than it would be in your home country you know in your home country you probably just think of an idea and you're like oh yeah i want to start this business i want to do this and then i have um people that i can call i have this i have the resources and then you can just start a business like that it's not the same farm it's not the same because who do you know <laughs> it's just more difficult because you have to think of you have to do your research what would what would be required of you to start a business what we're proud of you to register a business and then you can also not say that you know what these people want you don't know you don't know them a lot you don't know their culture you don't know what they are interested in so even coming up with that business idea is more difficult same thing with side jobs right 
if you're living in your home country, it's easier for you to get side jobs because, you know, there are people who have recommendations for you that they can refer you somehow, somehow, but you're in a foreign country and side jobs are not something that you can easily get through referrals and recommendations. So that leaves you with social media. That means that you have to optimize your social media. You, you can't joke with, you know, like keeping your LinkedIn up to date, your portfolio, whatever it is you do, like putting it out there and making use of, you know, like freelancing sites online, like Upwork freelancer, because that's your best bet at getting like side jobs. So that's something you have to put into consideration. And then the final thing I'm going to talk about is the cultural differences. See, regardless of where you are, in most cases, when you move to a country, there are like cultural differences. In the way, in education, say you're going to school, you realize that, okay, the way people do school here is not the way I'm used to doing school. Maybe the way the lecturer teaches, the way they give assignments, the way they give tests, you just realize that it's not the same and it's different. So you have to adjust to it. And sometimes the time it takes you to adjust may affect you because while people are just while the um while the nationals are just getting into it and you know getting right at it and there is no friction whatsoever you're trying to adjust to something new you're trying to adjust to you know getting used to the new environment and the new culture same thing in your workplace in where you used to work in and um, wherever you were you probably you know like you're more comfortable because you know the people you are working with you have like a relationship but in another country yeah you're trying to adjust to the culture you're trying to get to know your new colleagues and you have to work and deliver so you're trying to work and deliver so you don't come off as somebody who you know doesn't know their stuff so these are the things that you know like i have noticed and i have mentioned if you moved abroad if you're living somewhere different from your home country what have you noticed what have you observed what what was difficult for you when you moved what did i not mention what do you think people should know please let's have this conversation in the comment section so that we can tell people who are interested in moving abroad so they can prepare their minds for it okay anyway thank you guys for watching this video till the end please do not forget to subscribe if you subscribe if you've not please 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 subscribe to my channel thank you <laughs> yeah also check out my other videos thank you also click the thumbs up button yeah so like this video if you found it helpful please recommend to your friends please share my videos if you found it helpful in any way support me you know let me know what you think let me know what you want to hear just just talk to me just talk to me okay i'm trying to make friends so please talk to me so that we can be friends yeah anyway yeah thank you for watching this video till the end and i will see you in my next video